Hi there. Welcome to JJSM Art Station. Glad you could join me. I'm currently working on a 20 hectare park complete with Olympic sized game courts such as basketball, volleyball, lawn ball, tennis, football, among others. Now, I need to do a quick aerial perspective to illustrate and show to the client how my master plan works in terms of space programming, framework, and circulation. This is just the preliminary design stage, so I do not want to spend too much time drawing the aerial perspective. At this very early stage, I do not want to commit too much, because during the course of the design process between coordination meetings, there will be a lot of revisions along the way. So, if you want to learn how to draw a quick aerial perspective for a 20 hectare park, please stay tuned. But before we proceed please click the subscribe button and the bell icon, this will help the channel a lot. How to draw a quick aerial perspective of a 20 hectare park in Procreate. The first step is to create a tilted version of your master plan. It's a distorted version of the master plan which is seemingly set like you're looking at it from a higher elevation, like you are on a plane or on top of the tallest building looking down. Before Procreate app was available, I've always used Photoshop to distort my master plan for this purpose. Using Adobe Photoshop, I would continuously tilt the master plan on any direction looking for the best possible viewing angle which shows the important features. I would just push or pull the box grips distorting the image until I am satisfied with the view. After that, I would print it, put a sheet of tracing paper on top of it, and draw over the perspective using the distorted master plan as a base guide. After drawing the perspective lines, I would then transfer it onto a drawing paper and render it using watercolors, colored pencils, or pen markers. This was the technique I used to draw these large-scale aerial perspectives. Now, let's go to Procreate. Procreate is an app for drawing and sketching. Aside from that, it offers tools similar to Adobe Photoshop like distorting your images, which we are going to use for preparing the base for our aerial perspective drawing. First step, make sure you are on the right layer and tap the select button at the left-hand corner. Then carefully draw a loop around the plan as your selection. Tap the arrow next to the selection button and make sure that the distort tab is turned on so you can begin distorting the plan. Similar to what I showed you in Adobe Photoshop before, we will push and pull the grip boxes, rotating and distorting the plan until we get our desired view. It could take a while distorting it because we are constantly judging the angles of the view making sure that we show the important features of the master plan. Do not be discouraged if we cannot get closer to the view that we want. Trying and failing is part of the process. Do not give up, with enough perseverance, eventually we will get there and achieve our goal. After some time rotating and distorting, we may plan ahead how we would show and draw the vertical details of the aerial perspective, like the buildings and structures, trees and other vertical elements to name a few. We may repeat the process of selecting and distorting until we achieve our desired aerial view. As we get closer and closer to our desired view, we can imagine and design the look of our perspective in our head. This method of forward thinking is crucial in the design process because in the design business, time is important. So whenever I draw my final design, it has already gone a lot of revisions inside my head. Pardon me because since I was on a very tight deadline when I drew this, I did not have a chance to record a live video showing me actually drawing it. It's a good thing the Procreate saves a time lapse automatically until you set it off. Now, let's go to the Procreate time lapse video, and I will try to talk you through about the process, how I am doing it. On a new layer, set a red or another color with any thick brush. We may label the new layer sketch, so we can easily turn it off after we are finished with the perspective. We may lighten the background with the layer control, so our sketch will be very visible. This will come in handy whenever we are ready to finalize the drawing. Now, using the red pen, I am sketching the approximate vertical elements including the buildings and the undulating footbridge that encircles the site. At first I am planning to draw the trees, so I started sketching it, but decided not to continue with the trees because it would block a lot of the details. Remember that my aim for this perspective is to illustrate the space programming layout, not the actual vegetation, so I guess that no trees at this early stage of the design is the way to go. Now the super easy part is just tracing all the ground level elements of the perspectives. I am talking about the pathways, roads, sidewalks, parking lots. 
Not to mention the play court such as the football pitch, basketball courts, volleyball courts, 3 by 3 half basketball courts, two full-size basketball courts, two lawn ball courts, badminton courts a futsal court, tennis courts and a number of table tennis play area. We also have a community park set adjacent to the existing residential and mixed-use block on the west side. The community park contains several children's playgrounds which include sand pits, toddler play areas, play equipments of bigger kids, giant structure play equipments, wall climbing spot, skate park. Not to mention the amenities for the older people like the fitness stations, strolling pathways, the undulating jogging loop and the resting and seating spaces scattered throughout the park area. This is the really easy stuff that you can do really quick without really thinking too much about it. Before we go on too much, make sure that the final drawing is set to a new layer. We may label it final to distinguish it from the other layers. Take note that I am constantly checking the layers by turning it on and off to make sure that I am on the right layer. It will be a nightmare if we have done too much and then in the end discovering that our layers are mixed up. I can't imagine myself redrawing everything and losing all those time spent on a wrong layer. That would be a terrible waste. Now, we continue on tracing and drawing the details of the plan. I am telling you, this is too much easy that I could finish it really quickly. It's just a matter of time. Since we are doing a 20 hectare park, still it would take us a long time drawing it, but since all the ground level details are already set, we can move on very quickly. The additional grading of the mounds on the park is just an approximation and was drawn based on estimating the size of the space. Actually everything here is just an approximation and estimate since perspectives are not really measurable. All we need is a reference line with a known dimension, so we could estimate the size of the other elements in the perspective relative to the same reference object in the plan. For example, I know that the road at the southeast side is roughly 20 meters wide, so I could make a reasonable guess about the size of the structures, which is about proportionate to the reference. On this perspective, I am not planning to draw the other details like the netting around the courts, nor the goal areas and the pole lights such as floodlights among others. At this stage of the design phase, it is too early to decide the location of those elements, and it might make the perspective look a bit too busy. That is the point why I decided not to draw trees in the beginning, so as to focus and present the spaces in a clean and orderly way. After the design has been approved eventually, that is the time that we need to consider designing the locations of such elements. But for now, we stick to what is needed in our drawing and ignore the things that we could worry about at the later stage of the design. We do not want to be caught up worrying every little things that might hinder our progress. For this kind of large-scale projects, we need to take one step at a time. Eventually, we will pass the design stage and move on to design development phase, where we will consider all the working elements involved in the project. At this stage, I am putting in more details at the community park. I am still not sure exactly what to put in there, so just filled it up with lines and shapes to make it look like there is something happening over there. Then I decided to design a view tower at the northeast corner part next to the undulating bridge. This tower will provide a vantage point and will become a landmark and placeholder as well, especially since it's visible from the two sides of each flanking roads, thereby attracting more visitors into the park. Then I continued developing the remaining play courts at the eastern part of the park. I designed mounted planters in between the courts with edges lined up with step seating for the spectators. This buffer planting is very important to soften the landscape as well as to provide shade once the planters have trees in the future. I am proposing to use permeable play court surface over the paving areas as part of our sustainability efforts for the environment. We have to come up with a sponge city concept in our drainage system, meaning that we will let the site absorb most of the rainwater trough the use of swales, rain gardens and retention ponds. This is always a typical requirement for projects being built in China. The undulating footbridge around the site is one of the important features of the park. Aside from it being the location of our jogging loop, it also accommodates people who want to look around and walk at a higher elevation. It will have seating spaces as well as exercise stations located at various points along the way. Moreover, underneath the bridge will be the location of our park support services such as maintenance, toilets, offices, refreshments and snack kiosks. This aerial perspective does not intend it to be rendered realistically. This should be a design instrument to explain the design very well. The diagrammatic and clean graphic of the perspective is very crucial in expressing our ideas. In fact, drawing realist will cost us a lot of time considering the fact that there is a very high chance that we will revise this once the client voice out their concerns. Once the line drawing is completed, we can turn off the master plan base layer to leave out our clean drawing. Most of the time, this kind of drawing is already enough to explain everything. 
Looking at it, I decided to at least put a light green color over the planting areas to at least analyze the proportion between the softscape and hardscape parts of the park. After everything is completed, we could check each layer if we missed out on anything. Turning some layers on and off to see if we forgot some details. This is the best time to analyze and see if our work is good enough or if we need to further develop it. Judging from the finished drawing, it seems that the aerial perspective is completed, with most of the design points that we want to express are already there. Thank you very much for listening to my ramblings. Thank you very much for watching. Before you leave, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share my channel. You may click the notification bell icon so you won't miss out on my latest uploads. Goodbye for now, and I would like to see you again on my upcoming videos. Again, bye.